Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic, and this week Peter from Repeat Robotics has sent me some Repeat Drive Minis. These are a brushless drive system designed for one pound ant weights, and he's challenged me to put them into a 150 gram ant weight. Peter, you're on. So these things look pretty cool. They are back drivable, which means that the gearbox isn't massive. Uh, so these things are going to be crazy fast, which is gonna be really, really cool. But there is a couple of problems with this. First of all, these things are heavy, much, much heavier than an N20 motor. And secondly, they are way overpowered for what we need in an ant weight. An N20 will already spin the wheels rather than stall, even when you've got a large contact patch and four wheel drive driven by only two N20s. So to get the most out of these motors, we're gonna borrow something from the past. This is Downforce, an ant weight I built ages and ages ago that ran a fan inside a little housing to push the robot into the ground, getting more traction and being able to push people around a lot. It also took a ton more damage because being a heavier weight, it didn't get thrown around as much in hits. So it had a nice like flexible TPU front on it, which was poorly bonded together. But we're going to steal this idea of using downforce and we are going to try this again. However, this is quite a lot of space in the robot taken up by this fan. So I want to try some different methods of generating downforce. And we're gonna try the original fan we tried in the past, a Toyota fan as well, a Dyson impeller, and then another impeller inspired by some wall crawling RC cars that I found. This one I'm hoping is the best because it will give us the most room inside the robot, which would be brilliant. That's kind of what we want here. We want this solution to be lightweight and also leave us plenty of space in the robot. So we're going to test all four of these. And to do that, I have printed identical test chassis or as close to identical as I can to fit the actual bands in them or impellers in them and we're going to do an angle test. Okay, so here is the somewhat unscientific test that I have come up with for doing this because we're testing like fans and impellers here. So I can't just put these on a scale and run the fan up because the impellers aren't gonna do anything to a scale. The scale is not gonna read any difference because it's like sucking the plate of the scale up towards the robot. So maybe it would read less weight. I don't really know. Um, so I figured we would try something different. And this is my idea of something different. At the back here, we have a little angle measurement that is just gravity powered. So I'm going to run all of these with some weight on them, about 160 grams, so more than an ant weight itself. And I'm literally just gonna grab this board and I'm gonna tilt it up until the thing starts sliding and slides off the end without the fan or the impeller running, and then with the fan or the impeller running. I'm gonna do this for all four of them, and I'm going to look at the results. Okay, so I kind of skipped over that pretty quickly because despite putting a ton of print time into all of these test chassis, a shout out to my filament sponsor, 3D Printworks, uh, and a bunch of time actually into the testing of all of these, this whole system was just flawed. It gave me some ideas, but not a lot uh, because all of the 3D printed versions of the fans were not fully balanced and that meant that they didn't get good traction on the ground when they were spun up and that led to just variable results. The only thing that I actually can say is that this particular fan definitely is blowing the robot into the ground and not sucking it into the ground because for all of these, you can see I put like little paper skirts on them to do a test as well and the fan performed worse 
when I put the paper skirt on them when it had free open air to drag in from underneath the robot and blow out the top, forcing the robot into the ground. So that was the only one that actually kind of performed well because it was a shop bought thing and you know, it's stable and balanced. Uh, the rest of these were not so. And I decided to print a new version of the Impeller, the final Impeller, the one that I thought was going to actually work the best here. Uh, to balance up on my prop balancer, there's two problems with that. First of all, uh, my prop balancer has been through the a lot. I moved with it, it got shoved in a box, and it does not seem to itself balance anymore, so I probably need a new prop balancer. And the second issue is that uh, when I did actually kind of get one of these somewhat balanced, or at least according to my somewhat dodgy prop balancer, uh, it still had issues, and that is because, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to do this on camera, but I can bend this backwards with my fingers because the disc at the top is too thin and just allows the whole thing to flex, which means when it gets up to speed, it flexes, yeah, it flexes outwards and causes the whole thing to be out of balance anyway. <sighs> so that was just annoying. Uh, the one thing that it did show me is that this style of like finny uh, impeller does throw a lot of air, so we're just going to push forwards with that and see how we go. And that should be basically all the parts we need other than some ESCs that I'm yet to solder up. But before I get to soldering up those ESCs, uh, we need to do something about these motor shafts. They are absolutely massive. They come like this, I think, so that you can like double support them from the other side. But uh, literally on the repeat website, it says to just cut them down. And I was gonna do that anyway, but it's nice that he, uh, he gives permission effectively. So we only really need a very small section of this. I'm actually going to cut these down to be about the same shaft length as an N20, which means it's time to prep the patients for surgery. We're just going to wrap them in a ton of tape so that nothing gets into the motors or gearboxes as we uh, cut through. Okay, so motors are now cut down. These are looking real good. Uh, and we have also got our ESCs wired up and programmed. I am actually using BioHeli S, not BioHeli 32 ESCs this time, because you can get smaller and lighter versions of the BioHeli S than the 32. Uh, they are programmable. I might do a tutorial on how to do this in the future, although only some of them are. Uh, if you want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, let's get to actually putting all of this thing together. Should be a fairly straightforward process. Uh, yeah, look at that. That is a great amount of motor stick out on here. The only thing I do want to be slightly careful of is these screws that go into the faceplate because the website says that you can't put screws too deep into these, otherwise you will break things. Uh, and I don't have a lot of sidewall here, so I'm putting in my shorter screws and hoping that they are short enough to not break the motor. That seems to have worked pretty well. Let's put the wheel on it so I've got a bit of grip. Yeah, beautiful, okay. Let's do the rest of this. Cool, and that is most of the hardware done. We have the motors in and we have the back walls and kind of motor mounts in, although the motors are mounted from the end. I've got these little like protectors here to stop things from going back into those. I've also got the impeller mounted up. All of this stuff probably does need Loctite in it, but we're gonna do that later. For now, what we're about to do is I've got all of the electronics connected in circuit. And we're just gonna make sure that our drive is going the right way. So I've got tiny little tape flags on each of these and we just need to make sure that when I push forwards, the robot's gonna go forwards. This is a critical thing for every robot build. I do this every time, but I don't often film it. So I figured today we might as well give it a film. So we're gonna do a quick power up. Cool. Now, good start. We have no movement and our ESCs ha appear to have um, started correctly. So if I push up on the stick, both motors seem to be going backwards and unfortunately at slightly different speeds. Because one of them seems to start first despite being programmed identically, which is slightly annoying. 
Uh, but they are both going backwards. Now if I go... I think they are the right way around, yes. This one thinks it's going backwards and I'm trying to turn this way, so that is correct. So we now need to depower this system and swap these plugs, because this is the good thing about having plugs in here. I can literally just pull that out, flip it 180 degrees, plug it back in, and I think if I do this on both, that should get everything working exactly as we expect it to. All right, so let's power back up. Cool. Yes, both forwards, both backwards, turning right, turning left, cool. Oh, this is going to be speedy. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to this. I just need to work out this issue with one motor not starting at the same time as the other. Okay, I think I fixed that issue. I think it was actually how I was pushing the stick was quite slightly wrong. Uh, so I can get it to drive straight, I think. Uh, I've also, as you can see, packed the electronics in here somewhat neatly. Uh, this was a huge, huge pain to do because there is not a lot of space in here. So much so actually that uh, I was gonna be running just a flat HDPE wedge, but I've now printed some TPU ones with a little step in here. And that way, with that step, uh, I mean, it's still, the electronics still bulge a little bit, but there's just that little bit more space inside of it to actually allow everything to sit down nicely. Uh, so we can put this thing together now. I've also actually printed a little spacer so that if I want to go over to the HDPE one later on, I can whack the spacer on the back of the HDPE one and run that as normal. Um, but we'll see, I think these TPU ones, because I printed a couple of very thick TPU ones, they should be fine to deal with combat, so we should be good. I also printed a TPU top plate. I think I might print a slightly thinner one because with this one, as it is, I actually run out of weight to put bolts in to hold it down. Anyway, with that, I think the next thing you should see is it in a test box. And there we have it, we are now done. Uh, we have a full ant weight with a one pound ant weights drive and an impeller. I think from that quick bit of testing in the test box there that the impeller does actually help. I was feeling less skittish with the impeller on versus impeller off. Certainly uh, stopping was a lot easier with the impeller on. So I'm just gonna kind of assume that it is helping out for now. Also, I will say the new ABS printed impeller that has a thicker base plate that cannot bend does take the speed a lot better. Uh, and also I think the rubber wheels are better as well because we saw in those tests that when I put that smaller impeller up to full speed, the whole robot kind of, or the whole test chassis kind of vibrated and skidded around. But with this thing, with the TPU wedge and the rubber wheels, uh, the vibrations weren't getting to it. If there was any vibrations there, it wasn't breaking the traction, which hopefully means this thing is going to perform a lot better uh, and actually have that kind of suction down into the ground. Uh, we are very, very close on weight. One of the things I might do before competition is print a slightly thinner top plate for the top and then add some like little skirting material around the bottom, much like I did with 
the test chassis, but rather than paper, I think I'm gonna print some really, really thin TPU squares because I think those will work just that little bit better as a skirt than the paper will. Yeah, that, that's gone really, really well. The only thing here is that this thing is going to chew back power. So I'm making sure I am charging a ton of batteries to take with me to the event because I don't want to get caught in a position where I need to turn around and fight very quickly and I can't uh, throw back into the arena. So yeah, some extra batteries are definitely going to help with that problem. If you want to see this thing fight, uh, make sure to subscribe because there will be a fight report video coming up very soon. I've got a fight uh, this weekend as of recording this video. So by the time you see this, this may have actually already fought. That means there will be a fight report coming very soon after that. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.